Halo Infinite's latest major updates released yesterday, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about some of the additions it made, the things that I like, and the things that I dislike. So anyway, without wasting any more of your time, let's jump straight in. First things first, we might as well start off by talking about the Mark IV armor core. Now this thing by itself is absolutely gorgeous, it is easily one of the best sets of armor in the game, and again this is something that is completely free. I'm really glad this turned out to be a core as opposed to a kit like the Mark V or the Mark VI, as this means it's fully customizable. Now the Mark IV itself is compatible with every Mark VII coating, so although coatings aren't fully cross core yet, any that you have for the Mark VII works here, and since the Mark VII has the most coatings, this is pretty cool. It means most of the promo ones such as Deathly Poison or the OPI nail polish coating will work on this armor. And thanks to additions like cross core helmets and cross core shoulders, if you are a new player, by default you now have 9 different helmets and 7 different sets of shoulders that you get right out of the gate. So the customization is the best it has ever been. And although sure, Infinite doesn't let you choose your colours in the way that the older Halo games do, I still genuinely believe that Infinite's customization is quite possibly the best we've seen in a Halo game, as there is just so many different options. Sure, the core system itself seems restrictive initially, but now with cross-core as well, I think it's much better than something like Reach. I mean, the Mark V core on its own is essentially Reach's customization with a little bit extra if you factor in something like changeable gloves. With the biggest drawback, of course, being the fact that you can't choose your colours like you could originally. But thanks to something like CrossCore, there is just so many options. And of course, if you have played prior events or unlocked prior free rewards in battle passes, you will have so many, so many options. Now, if you are returning to the game after a while, or potentially picking up for the first time, there is still the Winter Update Battle Pass, which is 30 tiers of Reach-themed cosmetics. Unfortunately, because it's an older one, you still have to unlock things like emblems and shoulders separately. But either way, this is a great place to start for a new player, as it allows you to unlock some extra helmets that, again, you can use on all your armors, some extra shoulders that, again, you can use on all your armors. And we also have the brand new Spirit of Fire Operation which is 20 tiers, although it does have about 11 tiers of filler, which is extremely unfortunate. That being said, the actual cosmetics that we do get, such as the armors and coatings, I think are really cool, and the helmet that is included is already one of my favorites. I do wish there was an actual battle pass, especially when you see the sheer amount of content that has released for the Mark IV. I think it's clear that there might have been some form of 50 tier battle pass planned at some point. But at a minimum, I would have maybe liked a second operation that is themed around the Mark IV. Because it is a shame that you only really have one set of armor that is designed for that core specifically that is entirely free. Like I say, at least with cross core, you still have a plethora of options for that new set of armor. But as far as the stuff that is specifically designed to match with that core itself, you are fairly limited. We do have two other operations to look forward to in the future, with Cyber Showdown 3 and The Yappening 2. Cyber Showdown will see a few cosmetics for the Chimera Core, and Yappening will see a few themed around the Mark 7, and these are all banished themed cosmetics, which is kind of interesting. But I'll speak more about those at a later date. Now, while we're still on the topic of customization, I might as well touch upon the store, which is where most of the Mark 4 cosmetics are found. I still stand by the fact that I think this is the biggest and best shop update we've had as there is so many different sets of armor to choose from and after weeks and weeks of nothing but repeats or just smaller bundles like individual coatings this was extremely refreshing to see and there isn't really a single bundle here that i think is terrible in terms of design the pricing is another story i guess with the shop video yesterday most people probably just didn't watch it as everyone just assumed that i was supporting and endorsing the prices when that couldn't be further from the truth bar like maybe one or two exceptions for the most part i pretty much said everything was in a really pricey territory and although i really like the armor sets that doesn't necessarily mean i think they're worth the price i still think it was the best shop update in terms of the quantity that we've seen on the store especially considering the past few weeks everyone's been complaining about reaping so it's so nice to see a bunch of really cool armor sets. But that doesn't mean I think they should cost 1,800 credits each, in some instances more, and luckily in some instances a little bit less. Especially like with the sniper weapon bundle, that costs 1,800 credits and it really doesn't feel worth it. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I really think this game needs to give players the option to buy items individually or at least break some of these down into smaller bundles. A lot more people would buy the sniper weapon model if they could just buy the sniper weapon model, and then you could sell the effects as a separate bundle. And the same applies to a lot of the armor. Some people just want a helmet, some people just want a set of shoulder pads, and the fact that you can't just buy those leaves a lot of people uninterested and not wanting to spend almost $20 on a set of armor. 
Fortunately, there is at least some other cool free cosmetics that you can earn at the moment, with this week's ultimate reward being the helmet that belongs to Kai in the Halo television series. And just for logging in this week, you also earn her visor, and you don't even need to play the game, you just load into the menu and the visor is yours. Next week, we'll be able to get the helmet that belongs to Riz, and I don't think it's the week after that, but instead, two weeks after, we will be able to earn Vanik's helmet, and you will also get his visor as a login bonus. So as a whole, there is some cool ultimate rewards and players are going to be able to earn even more cool cosmetics without spending a penny, and I think that is great. Also, in regards to the progression system, because I've seen a lot of people say that Infinite doesn't have anything to earn, of course, there is the Mark VI kit that you earn for reaching hero rank, but that does take a lot of effort and a lot of time. But from the stream that 343 held the other week, it does sound like they're working on ways to improve the progression system, and we should be getting a system similar to the exchange from Master Chief Collection, which will allow players to unlock prior ultimate rewards, prior event items that you missed out on, and they did also mention unreleased items. I don't really know what that means. Hopefully it's some of the unreleased helmet attachments for the Mark 7, maybe some unreleased coatings, and other things that have been visible in the game for quite a long time or have shown up in trailers they are yet to actually come out. I mean, I haven't missed any of the events, and I unlocked most of the ultimate rewards that I wanted, but either way, this is something that I am looking forward to. We don't know too much about it yet, or when 343 plan on releasing this feature, but at least we know there is improvement in regards to the progression system on the way, which will allow players to earn even more. Now, just quickly going back to the shop as well, I think people wouldn't have as much of an issue with the prices if there was at least some way to earn credits. I think maybe if once every month you could get 300 credits as the ultimate reward so people could save up over time and eventually buy store bundles they want, that would be pretty nice. I have seen a lot of people say that they should include credits in the progression system and that would be great too. Maybe if every time you reach a new tier you get 100 credits, maybe a little bit more. By a new tier I mean from bronze to silver, not each individual rank in between those tiers. Because of course the game is free and they do need to make money off it somehow. That doesn't necessarily mean I agree with the monetization by the way, but I do understand why a lot of the cosmetics are behind a paywall. And to be honest, I'd prefer optional cosmetics to be the thing that players have to pay for that don't affect game playing that you don't need to spend money on as opposed to something like map packs which completely divide a games community anyway getting back on track what else did the update add not a lot we do have a new arena map this being illusion and it is already one of my favorite maps in the game i think it's a very creative and very fun social map the area in the middle applies an active camo effect to any player that's standing within it and i think this is really fun aside from that the map also contains some really cool easter eggs so I highly recommend maybe just loading in on your own and just exploring the map and looking for what you can find. There is unfortunately no new game modes and that is the only new map so far, but there was some new Forge additions, they added a Covenant object palette and some other improvements to Forge. So the chances are we're going to see some really cool community made maps coming out in the very near future, a lot of which I would expect to come to matchmaking. I'm a little disappointed there was no big team battle content with this update specifically, however we do know that in a couple of weeks we should be getting the big team battle refresh which will add various community made forge maps to big team battle and I am very much looking forward to this. We haven't had a new BTB map for quite a few months and that was Scar with the release of Season 4. There wasn't any new sandbox additions, technically, Illusion, one of the easter eggs, does allow you to drive a forklift, although I'm not yet to do this or see this myself. The Bandit Evo did get a buff though, and it's a pretty major one, as now the weapon no longer has any bloom, which means you can absolutely beam players with it. And honestly, it might make the weapon a little too good. Again, I was really hoping for some form of new weapon or vehicle, but because now 343 are moving away from the traditional seasonal model, this means they can just add things whenever they want and don't need it to all fit into a specific season. So who knows, maybe new weapons and vehicles are closer than we might think. I have seen a lot of people make the claim that Infinite's dead and 343 are moving on from it, like, immediately. We do of course know that there is other Halo projects in the works, but that doesn't mean 343 are just ditching Infinite. Why would they announce they're working on features like a match composer, like that improved progression system, and other elements too, if they just plan on ditching the game? I can assure you they wouldn't be making an absurd amount of cosmetics if support for Infinite was just getting cut off in the next three months. I don't think this update is bad by any means, it's improved customization a lot, it's provided a really fun arena map, but there isn't really a lot of substance to it. This feels more like a mid-season update kind of thing as opposed to a new seasonal update, which to be fair, it's not supposed to be a seasonal update anyway. It's just a shame because it felt like we had to wait for quite some time for any big content drop, and the one that we've had just feels a little lackluster. 
I absolutely adore the new armor and the Mark IV is probably going to become my main core. I just hope that we don't have to wait too long for new maps, modes and sandbox editions. Of course I've already mentioned the new BTB stuff in a couple of weeks and we know they are working on other community made maps and I love that 343 works so closely with the community to add more to the game. I just hope things come sooner rather than later. Anyway, thank you for watching, let me know what you all think down in the comments and I'll catch you all in the next one.